All right. All right, so uh, welcome back. Uh, we will be discussing uh, from the Master Shiny uh, textbook, we're going to be discussing chapter 12, which is titled Tidy Evaluation. Okay. And just as a, you know, as an introduction to this type of uh, situation, uh, when I started R uh, back in, you know, around 2018, 2019, you know, my, my uh, uh, introduction to, to R, one of the things that I found kind of interesting, in, in in fact, very peculiar of R is the distinction that R does with what is called data var variables and environmental variables, okay? If, for example, you come from a, from a programming language, uh, a general programming language, like for example, C or even, you know, Python, uh, you will see that most of the time you're working with uh, what is called environmental, environment variables, okay? So there's really no, no distinction between the environment variables that you have in your environment and the ones that you are uh, that you are manipulating, let's say with an object like a data frame. But in R, there is clearly a distinction and it's the way R was built. Because remember, R is more specific uh, oriented is more to work with statistics, with uh, uh, tabular data, you know, uh, data frames, etc. Okay, so that's why uh, if you are not, you know, very uh, familiar uh, with this, you are going to have a hard time where you are, when we are constructing functions that uses what is called the tidyverse. Okay, and there you will see that some of the parameters that you use normally in a function, you have to do certain notations to bring your data frame uh, values into that function. It won't bring it, you know, uh, if, if you use regular variables. And you will see an example of this uh, when we start to discuss a Shiny. Since Shiny also is built on functions, right? The UI, the server type is their functions, really. So that's where the tidy evaluation uh, concept comes into, you know, into re relevance. All right. So let's see. Let's do a, a, a you know, the 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 first example that the that the book you know shows us. Okay. So in this example, we're going to be uh, using this uh, uh, packages, you know, the shiny the dplyr packages for data manipulation in, uh, from the tidyverse and also a ggplot for uh, data visualization, okay? Then, uh, the first uh, uh, example that we have is that we're going to define some what is called numeric variables. And this is these variables correspond to the data frame called diamonds which is built in ggplot, all right? So there's some variables like carat, uh, depth, which is, uh, you know, a measurement of a certain, you know, uh, parameter of the diamond, table, the price of the diamond, X, Y, Z. So when we uh, do this, right? You know, we name a vector with all these uh, variables. Then when we are constructing our user interface, we're going to be using the select input, right? Which is the variable that we're going to be, you know, uh, choosing from these numerical variables. Uh, the numeric input is going to be value one, that's going to be the default, and the output is going to be a table, okay? Which is the data frame table. And in the server, we're going to define the function uh, that is going to get the data from this data frame diamonds as a reactive value and we're going to filter with an input var right the input from this choices uh greater than the input from the minimum which is this value here okay so what we want is to filter the 
a variable, the numeric variable that we choose, filter it for a value that we're going to be uh, also inputting. And the default is going to be one. And the output, right, the table output is going to be render table and the head heading of the data frame of the data that is going to be filtered here. All right. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay. So uh, by default, we're choosing caret, right? And the default value is one. So what we're trying to do here is create this, uh, you know, shiny app that is going to give us all the values that are supposedly greater than one. But right out where when we see this, right? When we watch the output, you see that the caret, uh, some of them are less than the minimum, than one. So something is not right here, okay? Even though we don't have any errors, you know, the Shiny app supposedly is running uh, as intended, but there's something that is amiss. And is, is that problem that we're going to be investigating, which is related to the tidy evaluation concept, okay? So what is going on here? Well, let's look at some of the notes. Let's see here, okay? This is the example, okay? And the problem that we have with that kind of structure, that kind of coding that we are you know, using in Shiny is what is called a problem of indirection, okay? So normally, when you use tidyverse functions, you type the name of the variable directly into the function call. But now you want to refer to it indirectly. So in other words, we're trying you know, to get a filter, right? From an input variable that is named here, right? But we have to do something with that var. So instead of trying to get it from the environment, it's going to get it from the data frame that we are trying to filter, which is diamonds. Okay, so instead of referring to the environmental variable, we're going to do something that is going to refer that then to the data, what is called a data variable. We're going to transform that into a data variable. Okay, so let's see an example here of what is called data masking. Okay, and you can read, you know, in the in the book, you know, they get they get more into detail of what is an environment variable and what is a data frame variable, which is very uh, you know, it's, it's at the cornerstone of this uh, uh, tidy ev evaluation, okay? So what we're going to do is what is called data masking. So for example, let's say that we set an environment variable which is called, which is called min, and we are going to set that min to value one, all right? So why do we know that it's environment variable? Because it's right here. Okay, you can see global environment in your R studio. Min is uh, defined as numeric, uh, the, the number one. Okay, so now when we do this, which is the classical tidyverse notation for filtering uh, a variable uh, against an environmental variable, uh, we get this and we get the right result. Okay. What happens is that when we put this into a function, then that caret is going to be treated as an environmental variable and not a data variable, okay? And the way to do it is uh, following this notation. So for example, if we have var as caret, remember the numeric variables that we uh, you know, instantiated first you know, with caret, depth, Etc. Let's take only caret, right? The var caret. Then, when we you do this in double brackets, the var caret. What it means is that what I'm trying to get is not the environment variable, but the data variable. In other words, the day the, the the values from a data frame instead of a variables from an environment. So when we do this, right? we get the same output as the ones that we did with the original function, you know, using the tidyverse. But now we can use this notation 
into a function so that when we filter with the value of minimum, then the, the var is going to be interpreted as a data variable instead of an environmental variable. Okay, so let's do the same uh, uh, shiny you know, function, but instead of the, in the UI, right? In the, uh, sorry, in the UI, there's going to be no change, but in the server, there's going to be some changes. So for example, here, we did input, right? We called it input dollar sign var. In this uh, uh, instance, we're going to change that into dot data, okay? Referring to the data that is right here, right? Okay. And then we're going to use the double bracket uh, notation for the input var. And we're going to specify, we're going to specify that that input minimum is coming from the environmental. So we're handling two types of variables here. One from the environment, that is the minimum value that we're going to be using for filtering. And then we're going to define in double brackets an input variable that is coming from the data frame. Okay? So when we do this and we run our Shiny app, now when we uh, choose the variable caret, and we choose a minimum value, then we get the correct uh, you know, uh, rows that we are trying to filter, okay? The minimum values, the, 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 the values that are greater than one for carrot. And if we go, let's say uh, depth, okay? And we want to know, you know, right now, uh, everything is greater than one, right? So we are going to have a, almost the whole, the whole rows. But let's say that we want to check depth uh, greater than 100. There is no value greater than 100, which is something that, you know, we could be studying. But let's say that is 70. Okay, so now we get from the 70 uh, minimum, right? The minimum value of 70, we get the rows, at least the, the, first, the first rows that are greater than 70. All right? Any comments or uh, questions so far? No, to me the more the new part is the environment part. That Correct. is that is really useful, you know. Like yeah. uh, R gets really slow when it needs to follow a long very environments to find a variable. So mm -hmm. you can say that hey, you don't need to look for that in the data environment, you don't need to look up, you need to look up directly. I think yeah. that would help us to about a slow times. Yes, and, and for example, for for you know uh, programming in R, that's why it's not that intuitive, like programming other languages, because you have to know where your variables are coming from, if they are coming from the environment or if they are coming from an object like a data frame. Okay, so you have to specify that because if not, la like we you know show even though the application won't give you an error. That's a logic, uh, you know, that, that's a logic error in the way, you know, that the R is treating those variables, okay? And you find that, you know, almost everywhere, you know, when you are, uh, you know, using functions, uh, you know, to uh, using variables to define functions, okay? So let's take a look, you know, this was, uh, you know, uh, like a case, on that data masking for dplyr, right? Because we're using the filter, the filter function. Now let's look and how we're going to use that, you know, that technique, but with ggplyr, all right? So in this case, we're going to be uh, using the iris uh, data set, and we're going to be imputing two variables, one in x and one in y, which is going to be Probably, but they're going, they're, they're, there's going to be numeric, right? And you're going to plot, uh, you know, the output is going to be a plot. A excuse me. Uh, we're not uh, defining if it's numeric or categorical. So let's see, you know, how 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 that how how that it you know it, it goes. So for the fun for the seven function, which is where we're you know uh, constructing our you know our uh, our outputs, 
Uh, we're going to use ggplot, right? We're going to use the iris. And then in the aesthetics, right, when we define which are the variables that are going to, you know, be using, we're going to use the same notation as the dplyr that we see. So we're going to use dot data to refer to iris, right, to the data frame. And then in double brackets, we're going to use input the X that we're going to be using from the user interface and input Y, right? And the G on point, you know, it stays the same. So let's see how, how this, you know, how this works. Okay. So let's say that we want from the iris, there are only four, you know, four, uh, four numerical, uh, you know, uh, variables, and then one that is categorical, which is species. So let's say that we want to plot sepal.length versus sepal.y width, okay? And we get more or less, you know, something expected like a scatter plot from these two numeric variables. Now, let's see if we can use a categorical variable, which is something that, you know, we might be interested. So let's uh, select the only one that is species, which is a categorical and a numerical, okay? So when we do this, we see that the, the application is working properly, right? Is, uh, you know, plotting in the x-axis, plotting the, the three uh, species, and then the, the, the width, okay? And you can see, you know, this plot, this, this points, right? Using the geom point, and it's using here uh, what is called gg uh, to position, you know, to automatic position those uh, uh, th those uh, points. Okay, that's why you, you don't see it in a line. You see it more in a, like a like a cluster. Okay, because of that. So here we can see that using that notation, that tidy evaluation notation, uh, we're getting the results that we uh, that we expect. All right. Uh, let's do one other plot, right? So let's see, you know, in, uh, we're going to add here the select input, the geom, and now we're going to uh, give the user the option to select point, uh, to select smooth or to select jitter, okay, before uh, uh, doing, the, doing the plot. And in the reactive, right, the point is going to be geom point if we select point. Uh, if we select smooth, it's going to be geom smooth, and it's going to be jitter if we select geom jitter if we select jitter. Okay, and the same output is going to be the same notation and all that. So let's see how this works. All right, so let's say that we want sepal length in the x uh, axis and y uh, sepal width in the y axis. And the geom is going to be point here, which is the same uh, plot that we had in the previous example. Let's change this to smooth, okay? And as you can see, you know, we get kind of a smooth, you know, uh, lowest uh, function. And if we do jitter, okay, we get this type of flow, which is something similar to what we had in point. Let's do the same thing, but with species, okay, as categorical. So with Jitter, we get these points that I kind of, you know, spread around one of the, one, one, uh, around the species. Let's say if we do point here, you see the straight line? If we do the point, uh, you know, we get all these points in a straight line. And we, if you we smooth, then we don't get nothing because there is no line that we're going to be uh, extending. You know, to the to the LOS. So only the ones that have point or have jitter will work here. Okay, and that's something that maybe we can keep tailoring, uh, saying that if we choose a categorical variable, then smooth shouldn't be one of the options. Okay, but that's something that uh, you know we can we can do. Uh, let's say you know adding adding a more refinement to this. Uh, to this example. Using an update function. Correct. What was that? Using an update function that we have seen in prior chapters could be. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, because you know it's it's not very you know good to put some options that they're not you know going to be showing anything or they're going to be working properly. 
Okay. Exactly. So it's mm -hmm. part of the good good practices that you should be uh, we should uh be aware. De developing. Yeah. Okay. So now uh going back to the deep plier, right? Uh here we have another example where we select the variable, you know, from the from the different uh, variables from empty cars. Now we're going to use the empty cars. We're going to uh, set a sp slider, right? With uh, minimum and maximum, maximum value. The minimum value is going to be zero and the minimum is going to be zero and the maximum is going to be 100. And there's going to be a sort, a select, I don't select input, where we can name the variable that we want to sort. So in the function of the server, we're going to be doing the input var, observe the, observe the event of the input var, and then we're going to define a range, right? And the range is going to be empty cars. And now we get, again, that notation of the double brackets because we are referring to a range from a data a variable. Here, we're referring to an environment variable, right? The var here that is select the choice. But in the range, because we are using uh, information from the data frame, then we have to use the double notation. And in the slider input, we're going to set the session to the minimum and the value is going to be range, this range, double brackets one, okay, which is the first uh, item in that vector of uh, RNG. The minimum value is going to be the same one, uh, uh, you know, the first item. And the maximum is going to be the last item, the, the second one, okay? Because it's defining, when you define a range, you define the minimum and the and the maximum value, okay? Let's say if we let's say if we do range empty cars, uh, MPG, for example, you see that we get only two values, the minimum and the maximum. That's why you use in this notation to define those variables as the first, item in the vector and the second item of that vector. Then in the output, you're familiar, right? You're going to filter using the double brackets, okay, for the dot data, uh, you know, referring to the empty cards. And then we're going to be filtering by the input minimum, which is an environmental variable. And then we're going to be arranging by dot data, which is refers to empty cards again, and then double brackets, the input sort, which is going to be this variable here. Okay. So every time that, and this is the, uh, you know, the, 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 the way that we should be approaching these functions. If you are using, if you're referring to an environmental variable, you can use the regular notation. If you are using the data frame, the data variable the, from a data frame, you have to use that double brackets notation. Okay, so let's see how we, what are we going to get from this one? Okay, so the default value is MPG. We got the minimum value, right? 10.4 and the maximum value is three, which is the range of that variable. And then it's going to be sorting by MPG. Let's say that we want to sort by, let's say uh, horsepower. Okay, so now we get the same output, but now sorted by that character. And if we change, let's say that we change this to uh, displacement. Okay, so now we see that the range automatically changes, but the sort is going to be the same. If we want to sort by MPG, then we can do that too. Okay. Comments, questions. Yeah, you know, Ricardo, I think that for the range variable, mm -hmm. it's not needed to use double brackets. As it's a it's a vector. Right. But in R, remember that let's say that you know we get the MPG, right? Back, right? Mm -hmm. Range empty cars. Uh MPG. Mm -hmm. Okay, MPG VEC is going to be only those two values, right? The minimum and the, and the value. So if we want to bring just the first one, let's say that we, we do this, right? Okay, 
uh, you know, it, it returns that. But uh, uh, there's a, you know, there's some there's some subtleties in R, and I know that the notation, you know, the 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 the, the best notation to bring that value is the double brackets. I, I've always seen it that, that that way. Okay, but here also you can you can use the single brackets too. You think that could be related to variable names? For example, the double brackets would ignore the names, for example. Exactly. And also when you're using list, you know, list within list, for example, a, a nested list. No, also of course. Use, list, use no, the you need to yeah. Exactly. Use the double bracket too. So it's kind of a standard notation to it. But yeah, you can use a single bracket here too. Yeah, yeah. That's important because this is a, yeah, for a single vector, you could do it. Sometimes mm -hmm. if you're, I don't know if the try to to apply the names just to co to confirm that the, the names yeah. are erased because I haven't made the that check before. Okay, let's say names back, right? Yeah. Empty cars, right? No, maybe because you just need two things, maybe A and B for that M MPG vector. Uh it would be like names, uh, then you uh -huh. you call the variable MPG vector, and then you assign the vector, maybe A and B, to, to assign using the the base R notation. It's like- Okay, you say something like this. Names, MPG bet, no, MPG, MPG no, no, no MPG, uh, yeah. MPG to be the vector, exactly. Oh, okay, yeah. And then you assign A and B. And you now assign. No, no, no. You don't need to apply it because it's already a vector. So you mm -hmm. go after the parentheses, mm -hmm. and you apply the sign vector like uh, or equals. You know because no, no, no the dollar, the lower, and then the 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 minus. It's like 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 this. No. Or equals, you can apply equals, equals, and then C, and then you write a charted ah. vector like A and B. Okay. But you need it to be uh, strings because you don't have exactly. And now you can press enter. Now you call MPG bet. It have names. Exactly. Yep. If yep. you call yep. now using the double brackets. Okay, got it. Yeah. My supposition is that it won't recall the names. With no, because you need if you want to call it by the name, you need to use the no the position, use the number because it it, it thinks that the A is an environment variable. Correct. Exactly. Now you have returning with the name, if you use the double brackets with the one. Let's try and see now. Exactly, it doesn't return the name. It doesn't return the name, correct. Yeah. So that 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 be the, the main difference for a vector. Exactly. And and maybe that's why they're using the double brackets because they just want to get that numeric value. Exactly. Without the not, not the names. Not the names. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I, I didn't realize that, you know, uh, until now. Good. <laughs> no, no, it was, it was a really good part because I, I wasn't, it was like, I see a vector and I was applying before, you know, even mm -hmm. a function to remove the names, for example. Correct. In my, in my, so I know that I have this option now that I can use double brackets to don't, don't take in consideration the name. So it's a, to exactly. me, it's a, so just, just, just to get the value of mm -hmm. that, you know, of that uh, coordinate. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So now uh, let's do another, you know, enhancement to our, you know, uh, rendering of this uh, empty cars. And now we're going to uh, add what is called a conditional sort. So we're going to give the user the, uh, you know, the, the choice, right, of doing the sort ascending or descending. So here in the in the in the UI, 
this user interface, we're going to be adding this uh, checkbox, okay, input, which it says if you want it in descending order or if you want it in ascending order, right? And then uh, in the server uh, function, we're going to then add an if uh, statement, right? And in the if statement, you see that we're using the environmental variable, right? The one that we, uh, uh, you know, created here in the user interface. But then when we evaluate that input uh, uh, desk, you know, if it's true, right? Okay. You know, if it's, if it has a, a value one, then we're going to arrange empty cars by descending order using dot data referring to the empty cars and then uh the input var which is coming from the de from the data frame converted to a data value if not then we're going to arrange without the, the, the descending uh parameter the same thing with the notation of the data variable okay so here is how it will look Okay, so now, you know, we have MPG. Uh, the default is going to be uh, ascending, right? Because that's what is evaluating in the if statement. If there's no value, in other words, it's, uh, it's false, then it's going to be doing uh, ascending order. But if you then click here, then it's going to reverse uh, that order. And the same thing for, let's say, uh, uh, horsepower, okay? Ascending and descending. All right. Okay, so now let me see where we are here in the in the notes. Let me see. Okay, we still are in the examples. So the other example is the user supply data. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to upload what is called a TSV file, right? Uh, uh, kind of a text file. Then select a variable and filter by it. It will work for the vast majority of inputs that you might try it off with. So, because remember in the previous examples, we were dealing with already uh, data frames that we already know, you know, what a structure is. But this one is going to be a little more advanced in terms that we want to uh, upload an unknown uh, data set, one that is not known by the, you know, by the parameters in the function, and then try to parameterize that, okay, with the data that we're bringing. So the first thing in the UI is going to be, you know, define the data set. Okay, and we only are going to accept that that dot uh, TSV. Also, you, you can play with this. You know, you can also say, okay, uh, uh, apply it to dot TSV or dot T S S S S C S V. All right. So in the select input, we're going to name var, okay, which is a character, and we're going to also define numeric inputs, right? Minimum. Uh, the 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 minimum the default value is going to be one and the minimum is going to be zero step into ones and the table output. So in the seven function, there's going to be a little more you know uh, a little more advanced. We're going to require the input of the data, right? And we're going to be reading that in this case with a uh, broom, okay? With the the broom function from the package broom, and we're going to be doing input data and input data path. In the observe event from the data, we're going to update the select with the uh, var, you know, uh, var input, and we're going to name it choices, names. In other words, we're going to be reading that data frame and we're going to give the choices to the user of the names of the data. Of, of that of that data set that we are bringing to. Then another observe event for the input bar and the input bar is going to be the bar that we're going to be uh, choosing from those from those names. And of course, that input bar is going to be a data variable. Okay, so it's going to be on double brackets. 
and we're going to update the numeric input from the session, from the minimum, getting the minimum value of that value from that input bar, okay? Then in the output, we're going to render the table. We're going to require uh, the input bar and then the data that we're going to be you know, using here, right? Uh, which is the data frame, we're going to filter by the input bar, uh, which is greater than the input minimum that we are you know, using as an environmental variable. And we're going to arrange uh, or sort it by ascending order, depending on the input bar. And we're going to just show the 10, the 10 uh, first rows. Okay. So let's see how we deal with this. Okay, in the example, I think the data is going to be seatbelts, seatbelts that uh, TSP. Okay, which is the one that is mentioned in the in the chapter. So let me do this, right? Uh, let me do uh, one, 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 shining. Let me get. Uh, let me get the directory, Master Shiny. Okay, chapter 12. Okay, here we go. Okay, Oblo complete. And the first bar variable that is mentioned is driver skill. Why? Because it's the first one. You know, it's, it's going to choose the first uh, column of that data frame. And the minimum value is going to be 60 because it's already evaluated that the range, right, from diverse skill is from 60 to, you know, a maximum number. So let's say that we want all the, all the rows that have, you know, that suffer uh, uh, drivers uh, disease uh, greater than nine. Okay, so it's going to bring every, every row that has the driver skill uh, column greater than nine. If we try to choose another one, and this is all the right, all the all the uh, column uh, names that we can choose, we can choose, for example, uh, Van Kill, okay, which is right here. And in Van Kill, we see that the minimum is two. In other words, it starts with the minimum, right, and then we can choose from that number until, you know, uh, a, a maximum number. Okay, so we can choose three. Which is four, five, six, and so on. Okay, so this example is really neat because now we can use this kind of uh, you know uh, recipe to try to parameterize any uh, data frame that we want to explore. Okay, you know in terms of the the the, the number of of rows, you know depending on the on the mini, on, on a minimum value on a numeric uh, data. All right. Okay. So, okay. Uh, there's a mention here. It's very interesting. There's a mention here that remember that it says for the vast majority of the inputs, uh, there's a caveat. Okay. And it says that this type of uh, logic in the shiny, you know, uh, coding. It will work with the vast majority of data frames. However, however, if the data frame contains a variable called input, we get an error because filter is attempting to val evaluate this thing. Okay, DF uh, input um, min. Okay, so here uh, we get that error right here. Okay, so let's define a data frame x1 and y2. And the input is going to be a list with the variable x and the minimum zero. Okay. So input, right, is going to be a list with uh, that has two, you know, two, two, uh, two vectors, the var which is x and minimum which is zero. So when we try to do this with this notation, right? You know, the tidy evaluation notation, uh, look what happens. Okay. 
So it's trying to evaluate it, but it's giving us this output. Okay. And the problem with this is that it's ambiguous. Okay, because it's trying to uh you know evaluate something that the input that the that, that the input is not the input variable that we are we're, we're, we're trying to get. Okay. So for example, uh what happens if the data frame contains a variable called input? So let's see. Okay, we have x1, y2, and input equal to y3. Let's do the same filtering, and then we get the error. Okay, because it's not, you know, it's the input is interfering, that name is interfering with this notation here. Okay, with this notation. So what is the solution? Uh, the solution that, you know, the author gave us at uh, Hadley is to name this as the env environmental, you know, uh, variable. So explicit, explicitly name the data variables with the, you know, start with the dot data, and then the environmental variables start with the dot env. So here, if we do this, then we get the correct output, right? X1, Y2, and input three. So one of the things that the author also give us is why not a base R, right? So let's see what happens here. Okay. And in here, apparently, you know, we get the right, you know, the, the right answer. Okay. And he says, you know, Hadley says that that's a totally legitimate position as long as you're aware of the work that filter does for you so you can generate the equivalent base R code. So the base R code would work. Okay. But then well, we're going to have a mix of kind of tidy verse notation and base R notation. So I will say, you know, in my opinion, I will say, I think that's the message from the author. I will say that try to stick with one, okay? To make clear your coding, you know, your your coding. So it's, it's, it's clear to anyone that is going to be reviewing this or in the future, uh, you know, trying to make some changes here, okay? Any questions, any comments? You know, maybe in the base R, mm -hmm. the dot environment won't work. The point is that right. uh, for base R, the, your columns are no evaluated at variables in the variables. Right. So basically, right. you don't have that confusion that they, he explains. Exactly. But if you are going to use, I think that Hadley, even though he doesn't say it explicitly, but if you are going to use base R, stick with base R. Okay? Don't exactly. move it with tidy verse because then you know the the code is not going to be that you know legible all right and this is more a problem for the tidy verse than for base r exactly mm -hmm. in the way you know that the you know the the logic is, is constructed okay okay so now uh we're going to be uh getting more examples about the what is called the indirection okay and we're going to do, introduce something that, uh, you know, I, I, I've used it a, a couple of times because now, you know, because the tidyverse is always, you know, in constant, you know, in, in constant development. Uh, one of the things that sometimes uh, deep plier, especially deep plier, give us as a, as a warning message is that, let's say that you want to select, uh, you know, a certain a, a, a subset. Of a, of a data frame, you know, certain columns only. And what, sometimes uh, when you do that, it gives you a message that you should use this type of uh, a function, any of or all of, because sometimes, you know, there's some ambiguity in the in the way, you know, that it's, it's, been, uh, it's been coded, okay? So here in any of or all of, it says that both expect a character vector environmental variable containing the names of data variables. The only difference is what happens if you supply a variable name that doesn't exist in the input. All of, we throw an error, while on off, we silently ignore. So let's see what happens there. Okay, so in the UI, uh, we're going to, you know, do the select input, right? Variables, name, empty cards. 
And we're going to say multiple equal to true. So now, instead of just, uh, you know, forcing the user to choose one, now we're going to choose, we can choose more than one uh, variable in the same, in the same box, okay, in the same input. And then the table output is going to be the data. In the server, in the function, right, uh, we're going to do the output data render table, require input vars, which is going to be defined here. And then in the empty cars, we're going to do the select, uh, you know, a function. But then instead of just putting the input vars, we're going to say all of. All right. So let's see how that works. Okay. So now, because we don't have any default, we have a blank. Uh, let's see uh, if we're going to use uh, MPG, right? So we have MPG and we have the output of MPG. Then if we want display, we keep adding, you know, those uh, those columns, right? Those uh, variables, uh, weight, et cetera. Okay, and car. And because we only can choose any of the names here, in other words, uh, we don't we don't have the luxury of of uh, adding anything that is not in the in the selections, then it should be working, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Okay. So let's see what else here. Okay. Tadi masking. Okay. So working with multiple variables, it says that it's trivial when working with a function that uses study selection. You can just pass a character vector of variable names into any any of or all of. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do in that I'm asking functions too? That's the idea of what is called a cross, okay? And a cross, it was added in this version 1.00, and it allows the tidy selection inside that I'm asking functions. So a cross is typically used either one or in two arguments with group or distinct. So let's see how we're going to deal with this using a cross. And also, also uh, I've used across to get uh, you know row row wise uh, operations also, okay. So uh, you can use it also in that you know in that in that way too. So um, let's get the the UI. Basically, it's basically this uh, almost the same except that we're going to be uh, the table output is going to be now a count instead of the data. So there's going to be some manipulation here. In the server, we're going to render the output count. Okay, we're going to render the table, require the input variables that we are defining here in the UI. And then in the empty cars, we're going to do the group by across all of input vars. And we're going to summarize. In other words, we're going to count uh, you know, uh, the recurring uh uh, the, 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 the count, the, the, the number, the number of rows that correspond to that, to that variable. Okay. So let's see what we get in this. Right. So we get the same UI, right? Blank. There's no default. We get MPG. And what we get here is that we get the MPG values, but then we get what is called the count, which is how many of these var values are in that uh, in in that uh, you know in 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 the in in that whole uh, numbers you know uh, range of numbers. So here we see that ten point four appears in two you know uh, twice. Okay, the same thing as fifteen point two. Uh, 19.2. So it's kind of a, you know, it gives you more or less the distribution of each of the, those values. If we choose, for example, cylinders, we only has three, right? I think it has uh, three uh, uh, choices. Yeah, four cylinders, six cylinders, and eight. Now we get kind of a count, you know, uh, 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 like a bar chart, right? Time. So we get 11, that is, it has cylinders uh, four, 11 uh, rows. Then six uh, ro uh, rows, seven rows that have uh, a cylinder six and a cylinder's cars with 14. 
okay? And if we keep adding uh, variables, let's say, uh, uh, which are the amount of transmissions, then we get the count by each of these uh, instances. So for example, for rows that have cylinders four, and uh, I think the zero is, uh, uh, I think it's manual transmission. I'm, I'm not sure, it's manual or, or automatic. We have three that have that combination of cylinders and uh, trans type of transmission. If it's four and one, which is uh, probably automatic, then we have eight and so forth. So we can do kind of, you know, contingency tables here. Okay. Okay. One of the things that you should be aware is that across, uh, it's been deprecated. Okay. As of uh, Dplyr 1.10. So uh, be careful with that one. <laughs> Okay, apparently uh, a cross is going to, you know, is, is, is going to be, uh, is going to disappear, okay, within the tidyverse. So probably this type of... Uh, syntax. Uh, yeah, the sort of syntax probably, you know, will not work, you know, when they get, you know, rid of it. But there are other ways, you know, to, to replicate this, all right? Okay. So let me see. We well, only got three more minutes. So let me see. What else was here? Okay. Okay. So this is the last, you know, this is the last uh, example. Very good. Okay. So the second argument is a function, or this is a function that applied to each selected uh, column. That makes it a good fit for mutate and summarize when you typically want to transform each variable in some way. Uh, for example, the following code lets the user select any number of grouping variables and any number of variables to summarize. So now we're going to give the user the choice of, you know, how, what, what kind of summarization uh, do we want? Okay. So in the UI, we're going to select the input and we're going to give the user uh, the, the option to select which kind of uh, variables we want to group by and what kind of summary, summarization uh, we want, okay? So we got to select inputs and of course the table output is the data. Then in the output data, in the table, the empty cars, we're going to do the group access across all of input vars G, right? Which is the group, grouping variables and sum across the input var S, which is the summarized uh, variables. And it's going to be uh, the summarizing where define it as the mean of those, uh, you know, those values and then the count. So let's see how we, what we get out of this. Okay. So now we can then say, okay, let's group by a uh, cylinder, right? and do a summarization by MPG, right? So here, for, uh, you know, the rows that have cylinder four, we get 11, that's the count, you know, we already know that, but then also we get the average MPG for those uh, rows only. The same thing for the six cylinders and the uh, eight cylinders. Let's us add also the, the, the type of uh, transmission, and then we get the values, not only of the count, but also of the MPG. If we, if we want to add another uh, summarization variable, like let's say horsepower, then also we get the, the average, the mean of each of the groupings of cylinders and type of transmission for the horsepower, okay? And um, basically that's it. The only thing that the author mentions, and I had to research this one, it's not mentioned in the notes, but it's mentioned in the book, is to be careful about this kind of uh, coding. Uh, parse uh, combined with evolve. And there is, a, uh, there is a link why this is not good uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not a good uh, coding practice, at least in R, okay? This is the, the, the article.
that are going to be, you know, I'll post that also in the chat so it stays with the with the log. So I think that that's here. when you you paste the code that you want and then you evaluate that test. Correct. Correct. And and it and it grips, I mean, uh, I mean it, it works, okay, but it's not, you know, it, it could it could bring you problems, you know, in the in the long run. Okay. Especially when you, you know, uh do all other kinds of uh of programming in R. Okay. So I think that's uh, that's it.